True Radio. Emma Kirk. Yes, we are live and welcome to a special uh, True Radio chat. I'm joined by the beautiful and talented and we have a lot to talk about. Um, but I just, I, mean, I just said to you how beautiful you're looking. Um, in lockdown, I have not managed to brush my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, this this is not lockdown style. Anyway, how are you, Emma? So lovely to see I'm you. Good. So long. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for being beautiful time Emma. as well. You know, that's it. I know how busy you are. Yeah, yeah. But you know, um, Lockdown for me has been a lot of free time. And um, as you can imagine, I had about 70 or 80 uh, dates in my diary for this year and they were being added and suddenly poof, you know, majority of them are gone. And um, one of my my friends who's a, an agent as well has said to me, look, any gigs that we do this year, we'll just look at them as a bonus, yeah. you know, yeah. but just might as well write this year off. And even when next year comes, who knows? You know, and if anything, uh, what 2020 has taught us is, you know, Emma, nothing in life is guaranteed. Nothing. So so we live in hope and pray. And, you know, there's just awful things that have happened out of this. And here we are. And it's it's gift enough. I think there's maybe some positives as well. You know, um, it's giving you an opportunity and you to focus a bit on, on your music maybe have some different inspiration to what you might have done um, before lockdown. So there's the, well, a few positives, I think. Have you taken inspiration to write while you've been in lockdown? Actually, um, it's given me a time to actually rest my voice, you know, <laughs> uh, because I was singing nearly every weekend, doing several dates, several cup festivals, plus being in the studio working on my album. Um, so I... To be honest, I don't want to lie that I've been warming up here and there. I haven't. I've actually rested my voice because I started finding, I started having voice trouble by way of it getting hoarse. And I'm thinking, oh gosh, you know, what's I need to rest it? Went to see my throat specialist and he's like, there's absolutely nothing wrong. You're just allergic to the trees and the pollen in the air. So just take an antihistamine and, and just rest. So that's what I've been doing. But what I have been doing is it's given me an opportunity to, um, Continue learning piano because I'm on grade four now. So, oh, well done! Uh, like, yeah, yeah. So I've done the grade one, two, and three. So I'm I'm on grade four now. And I thought, I hope when I'm when I do my first lesson with my piano teacher, she'll be she'll be impressed because I've really been learning. <laughs> <laughs> really been hitting away at those ivory keys. <laughs> yeah. Is that the first? Is it the first instrument that you've learned to play? I mean, do you play others? No, that's the first one, you know, and uh, I've always wanted to play it, always wanted to play it. So um, I blame my mom and dad for not taking me seriously. So at a later age in life, I'm doing it. And let me tell you, it is so challenging. It's so <laughs> challenging, honestly. But I, I I look back and I think, look, I, I've done grade one, grade two, grade three. So I must be doing something right. So I just keep, you know, putting one foot in front of the other. Is it quite unusual though? Because I've done like cello and clarinet. So the way that I do, obviously, play very classical music. It's a challenge to be able to switch genres for you. Sorry, say that again. You broke up a, a bit, Emma. Sorry. So switching genres from your normal type of style of music to play for a, a grade. Um, goodness. Well, with the piano, it's classical music that I'm learning. You know, so. So that's another style of music that's, you know, um, entering my life because, you know, I come from the dance world, mm -hmm. the pop, the, the easy listening uh, ballads. So doing classical and playing Beethoven. I mean, I was learning this one piece that Beethoven wrote when he was five, and it literally took me one year to learn <laughs> that piece. <laughs> and I'm going, and he was five years old. <laughs> And here I am, this woman in my 50s, taking nearly one year to learn this piece that this child. <laughs> but it, it, it's just, you know, it's, it's beautiful. And so it's opened my eyes to, to classical music. And, um, you know, when I, I'm, I'm having a bath or when I'm, I just want to de-stress or I'm lying down, I actually put on uh, a classical music. I've downloaded this uh, app called Prime Foam or something. and Or this beautiful classical uh, styles of music on YouTube. Really, really lovely. 
Good, good. Maybe we could give Beethoven your turn on the light. So he can I think that. so. Can you imagine? <laughs> 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 that should be interesting. <laughs> So it's been a lot of change for a lot of people. Um, but you were just telling me about the concerts that you're and your gigs that you now have. How are they? How are they working out? Goodness me! Well, you know, I did um, a gig in Bulgaria for the first time after five months of not doing any shows due to the COVID, and we flew down to Bulgaria on the the seventh of. Um, August, so that's about what, three weeks ago I, I flew down with my agent. So you can imagine we were both uh, a little anxious and nervous flying there for one, you know, and then wearing the mask throughout the plane and I thought I was going to faint because the heat is, you're constantly breathing this, so I kept on taking the mask. But, you know, it, it was very cultured, very wonderful. And then we got to Bulgaria and I'm thinking, how is this going to be? Because this festival is called the Spice Festival and it's been going for some years. And they have it over a period of three days and they have up to 30,000 people. So I thought, how are they going to use social distance? And anyhow, so I opened the show uh, at about quarter to uh, seven and there were about just about 2,000 people in the audience. No social distancing, nothing. I mean, it was just, like, yeah, it was just like old times. But, you know, for me as an artist, honestly, I'm not going to lie. I loved it. I loved the admiration. Yeah. I loved the hands up in the air, the, the appreciation they showed in their faces because they've been missing performance. I've been missing performing. And so for myself and the other artists that performed, it was quite emotional for us, you know, mm. because to be honest, we don't know when we're going to do that again. Mm. So so come fast forward uh, this week. I've got uh, two gigs um, um, in Manchester and Chester, and they're both social distancing. So... I've never done a social distancing gig before. This will be my first. Uh, that should be interesting. And I saw some pictures of the social distancing gig I'm doing in Chester. And there's pods where people will be sitting in and I guess dancing and probably not allowed to move from there. So, you know, I'm just appreciative that I'm going to go out and perform. But I think performing on stage and these people in these pods or standing around tables and they're not supposed to move to the next one and you know, uh, touch other people as an artist will be very strange. And I think, will it feel lonely? Will it feel, mm. um, I'm here and you there, you know, mm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I suppose in one way, at least it's a live performance. Then in yes. the other avenue, it's, it won't maybe have that same atmosphere of people coming together. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose so. You know, I mean, you know, I, I just I'll wait for the day and see how it is. But all I can say is uh, my gratitude to be doing these shows and the social distancing. You know, if you want to call it the new norm, mm -hmm. then so be it. We just want to work. We just want to go out and sing. People want to go out and, you know, dance and have a drink and let their hair down. Mm -hmm. Can you see it like catching on the, the virtual, virtual concert? I think so, Emma. It has to because otherwise... You know, uh, the government hasn't said anything about club dates opening for us to perform to, um, theatres, uh, concert venues. When is that going to happen? Mm -hmm. When is that going to happen? And uh, it, it is a little bit of a fearful, you know, when you think about it. So if social distancing gigs are going to be the next norm for the time being or for however long, then we'll take it and, we, and we'll just make it normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it's interesting though because growing up, gigs was something that I wanted to go to. When you're growing up now, perhaps a new norm is your vision. Yeah, there may be missing. I think the missing one was something that was fantastic. That's yeah. the shame of it, I think, for me. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I just, I don't know. Uh, it's just, it's just a, it's a crazy one, really. We just have to wait and see. Well, I, I look forward to it. It's going to be interesting to see how it pans out, definitely. Um, yeah. Are you playing some of your classics or, and some new stuff as well? Oh, well, majority of the tracks that I do that they ask for is, um, you know, um, the 90s music. And then some of them have requested Turn on the Light or my new one, Magnificent. And, mm -hmm. you know, we released Magnificent on the uh, the 4th of May which was about, what, May, June, July, August, about three months ago. Um, 
the song itself has suffered in some ways because of the lockdown. There were no DJs to send the track to. Yeah. You know, so uh, my, my record company boss said there were just no DJs to send the track to. Um, and so, but, you know, uh, the stations that, that help promote Turn On The Light have so been very kind to me in embracing Magnificent. And we've got about between two to 250 radio stations that are playlists of it. So for me, that is a success. And, you know, mm -hmm. Emma, like anything in life, you just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Uh, mm -hmm. We're planning uh, a new release from uh, the album. I think it's called Spinning Away. So because I think Magnificent is such a great track, uh, Gary thought what we'll do is put new additional mixes on the back of Spinning Away and put additional mixes of uh, Magnificent and release that. So that's that's the plan before we release the album in the in the new year. So that would give that pack extra exposure then, really? Yeah, I, I hope so, because I think it's a good track and, you know, we're living in unprecedented times and people's lives have been af in af affected in, you know, not very good ways and some mm. in positive ways and some in really, you know, sad, awful ways. So, you know, here we are, still mm -hmm. breathing, still alive, and we got hope, and we just just keep living. We chatted before about the inspiration for Turn On The Light. What, what, did, uh, what was the inspiration for Magnificent and the rest of the album? Well, Magnificent uh, was actually, it wasn't written for me because Gary and I had been sourcing uh, tracks from other songwriters. And there's a bit of an interesting story with Magnificent, though. It was written by uh, a guy called Charlie Mason, who uh, a few years ago wrote uh, Shadows of the Moon for me. And uh, if you say it again, which actually went to number five in the American dance billboard charts, which was uh, quite a shock to me, you know, that, wow. And then, uh, <laughs> and then afterwards we did Shadows of the Moon and, and um, Charlie got a few of his friends to do different mixes. And then I got some promoters here in the UK to send out uh, the mixes. And of the seven mixes, they liked about three and they were like Rosella. The others are just, you know, not happening. Three, four, five, six, so oh, seven, yeah, so four of them. And uh, so I told Charlie that and he didn't take it very well. And he's like, no, you have to release them. And, and he just didn't take it well. So anyway, to cut long story short, my promoter, they were like, no, it's not gonna happen. These tracks are not happening. Um, so to cut a long story short, Gary brought me this track, Magnificent. He's like, you got to listen to this. I think you'll do it really well. And I thought, that's fantastic. And then when I saw who had written it, it was Charlie Mason. So I said to Gary, there's a bit of a history story here going on. And I explained to Gary. And then Gary spoke to Charlie. And then the next thing I got an email from Charlie saying, because you didn't uh, release the other mixes of uh, Shadows of the Moon, I don't think you can do Magnificent. So <laughs> you're not going to do it. <laughs> So I was like, oh, okay. I said, okay, fine, you know, that's all right, Charlie. If that's how you feel, that's okay. So Gary spoke to him. And then the next thing, uh, you know, I sent him this nice email. You know, I, I mean, within me, I was like, you know, whatever you want. Um, <laughs> and then the next thing, he, he, he sent me an email saying, okay, well, you're obviously such a nice person and a good singer. You can do Magnificent. So there's a story to Magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> well, <nice one. laughs> so have you done any mixes of it then for him oh goodness there's been so many mixes of magnificent i think we've got about uh we've released about five mixes which have all been different from one to the next there's been a a funky mix there's been a pop mix there's been a house mix and there's been a really sort of easy listening cool radio mix um, there's two or three additional mixes, like I said earlier, which we will put on the B side of uh, mm -hmm. Spinning Away. And is Charlie happy with the move? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we're very happy. We're very happy. You know, I mean, Emma, like my husband keeps saying to me, you know, wherever, whatever you do, just keep throwing mud and wherever it sticks, just grab it and go for it. Yeah. Um, you, you just got to keep doing your thing. You know what I mean? You, you can't stop as long as you've got the opportunity, mm -hmm. just grab it and, and go for go for it. So what is that the rest of the album then? How have you compiled that? Um, there's a mixture of uh, mid-tempo, uh, hands up in the air tracks, and we've got a couple of ballads there. So I, I co-wrote some of the songs like Turn On The, the Light I co-wrote. Uh, and then Gary and I wanted to do some covers that were done in the 60s and the 70s. You know, I don't want to give too much away because I, I want people yeah, to... Yeah, yeah I, I mean, you just, I, I just thought about these two tracks where... Um, that were done in the 60s and the 70s. And, uh, you know, 
I know about them. And when Gary played them to me, I just couldn't imagine doing them in the style that we've now done them in. And I'm so, so grateful I listened to him. So, so we've got a mixture. And, and also, I think my album is, is, is a bit more soulful than, you know, coming from Everybody's Free. I mean, if you listen to Turn on the Light and Magnificent, they are different. And the thing is, Emma, I don't want to stay stuck in the past. You know, everybody's free will forever be a part of me and I'll be eternally grateful to that. But we all grow, you know, yeah. and I want to do different styles of music because I feel I've got it in me to do ballads, uh, easy listening jazz if you want, you know, and, and just, yeah, just move with the flow. Yes, I mean, you have a group that is, is diverse to do that. And I can imagine you singing on a, a small or, you know, like a jazz type style. But... Do you find it difficult to move your voice from one to another? No, not really, because I love singing. I love performing. Um, about in 2008, 2009, it was my dream to always record uh, an easy listening jazz uh, album, which I did. I had the opportunity to do that, and it's called Brand New Version. Um, and, you know, on the, in fact, I did a Paul Weller track called, uh, what's it called again? Um... Oh, I forget. But anyway, I did a Paul Weller track on there, which was we, so Simon and I sort of brought it down and did a, a, a jazzy sound to it. We even added Everybody's Free and, uh, you know, changed <laughs> to do it. Yeah, did an a, a easy listen j a jazzy sound to it. And I got the opportunity to to do 53 dates supporting Billy Ocean because of that album. Wow. It was incredible. We started uh, October 2008, and then we had a break December, January. And I remember we started again end of February and ended in April. Uh, and we did across the UK and I did the whole album. And, you know, the people in the audience were like, and it was at concert venues that had about two, 3,000 people. And, you know, some people go, isn't she the singer that did Everybody's Free? I'm like, that song, I'll never get away from it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they were just wonderful and we just had to do Everybody's Free. So at the end of it, we did the jazzy version of Everybody's Free and they'd be like, we knew it, yes, we knew it, you know. But it was a wonderful experience. <laughs> so I will never, ever be able to leave the stage without doing that song. I suppose in some ways, though, as much as it's, it was what you were known for, it's given you a platform to do other things, hasn't it? Absolutely. It, it has helped. You know, there was a time, Emma, I'll be honest with you, where, um, you know, the word pigeonhole, I, was, yeah. I, I felt uh, a few years ago I was pigeonholed by Everybody's Free because that's all everybody wanted to hear and that's yeah. all they ever wanted to do. And then, and then the girl bands and the boy bands started happening. And I was lucky if I got one or two club dates to do in a period of two months. You know, mm -hmm. things just started dying down. And uh, I just thought, is this the end of my career? You know, it was a frightening mm -hmm. experience and I was dropped by Sony. Um, and then I took up a beauty therapy course. So if you want a massage, hello. <laughs> oh, lashes, lashes. Yeah, lashes, lashes, exactly. And, uh, <laughs> and then uh, things started picking up again because, uh, you know, I always had people who believed in me. I have this passion in me to be a singer and a performer. It's what I love. It's what I, I know. And then things started lifting up again. And that has taught me, even if I'm pigeonholed for that song, it's it's created a career for me to earn a living from and and to still go out there and do my thing and and not take anything for granted mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's what happened so i'll sing everybody's free for you every day one dj said to me no please don't but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we have a message here i'm just going to pop it onto the screen so you can see um daniel has said to me today turn on the light is meaningful song thank you for sharing your thoughts it means an awful lot um do you do you find that that's what people say to you about the meaning of it behind, behind the song absolutely i mean i've had um so many beautiful messages from people over the years uh in regards to everybody's free and what it's meant to them i've had People come up to me who have said it gave them the strength to come out and tell their family and friends that they're gay. You know, mm -hmm. I've had people come up to me and go, it gave us the strength to live an unhappy relationship. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, I've, yeah. had, I've had one of the things that has really made me, you know, my jaw hit the floor has been 
you know, I've, I've quite a few people have messaged me and have said, um, my friend or my, my um, relative passed away and they loved your song, Everybody's Free, so much that it was played at their wake. You know, and honestly, yeah. what? And, you know, Emma, that, that really touches me. That really touches me. And, in fact, just recently a friend said uh, one of their friends uh, passed away early or late last year and uh, they loved Everybody's Free so much. It was played at their funeral. And that just, I think, wow, you know, so if it's just the one song that I sing every day for the rest of my life and it gives this, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I'm there, I'm your girl, I'll sing it. But I mean, as an artist, that's, that's what you want, isn't it? You write something that means something to everybody in a different way. That, that has to be the pinnacle. So to get messages about turning on the line and everybody's free in that way, that must make you so proud as well. Oh, it, 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 is, it is truly a humbling experience. It is truly humbling. It's so encouraging. It makes me want to go out there and perform. And because, you know, Emma, this industry that I'm in is such a tough industry, you know, mm. and, and I've got a lot of my singing friends who we've become good friends over the years. We have this camaraderie when we're at shows together because we're all nervous. We're yeah. all older now and, like, you know, got an extra wrinkle or so. <laughs> <laughs> But like we say to each other, you know, like there's Sonic, who is just wonderful. There's Urban Cookie Collective. There's Baby D. Let me be a fantasy. And yeah, we are yeah. such good friends. And we're like, guys, we're still here being asked to sing our songs and being paid for it. And we're traveling. We're traveling to places we would never, ever otherwise be able to afford to go to in, mm. in normal times. And, you know... It's just been wonderful, and yeah, and we just we just feel so grateful. Is there anywhere that you haven't visited that you would like to do a gig at? Is there what? Sorry. Anywhere you haven't visited, you'd like to do a gig? Oh, I think China. I'd love to go. <laughs> really, would, China? Yeah, I'd like to go to China. And just just the other day, I was watching a documentary on. Uh, I think it's if I might pronounce it wrong, Macau, where it's it looked like it looked like. Uh, Las Vegas in China. It's it's part of the Chinese island, I think, or, or part of China anyway. It's called Macau. And I thought it just looked like Las Vegas because my husband and I have had the fortune to travel to Las Vegas and I've had the fortune to perform there as well, which has been incredible and magical and just what a concept of a city that never yeah. sleeps. Yeah. You know, it's exhausting actually. Yeah. <laughs> I've been. Yeah, but it's scary. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And but uh, Macau looked the same with all, all these magnificent tall buildings and I just thought my gosh I'd love to go out there and perform really I can see a video a music video on the Great Wall of China. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a very strange question now for you. Um Chris Kelly is the boss at True Radio. He says do you remember him DJing in Barnsley? <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> And he also said, would you like a photo of him signed? <laughs> Tell him I would be honoured. I would be honoured. I'm, I'm in my dressing room right now at home and I'll find a place for it somewhere. So I'll be waiting. <laughs> Tell, him. <laughs> Tell him yes. <laughs> I think he's going to live on that for the next, rest of his life now. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> So where where are you tomorrow then? Where's your concert tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow I'm in Manchester uh, at Longbridge. I don't know where that is, and it's social distancing. Mm -hmm. It's uh, one of these uh, Love the '90s uh, festivals, and they have anywhere in normal times between two to two and a half thousand people. Yeah. So the most they can take into this venue is 400. So quite exclusive though, isn't it as, as somebody going to that it's not almost an exclusive concert yeah exactly exactly and so they are they only allowing 400 people and that's that's the majority they can take and then mm. on sunday in chester the majority they can take is 200 people and not anymore wow okay. that will be interesting and i believe in chester um where the people will be in their pods the stage is in the center so i think am i gonna feel lonely <laughs> Surrounded by people, no. Yeah, surrounded no. by pods, and uh, that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. I can't yeah. wait, though. I'm, I look forward to it. Quite intimate, though. It'll feel uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, and it looks beautiful. The pictures look beautiful, and it looks intimate. And I just think, 
you know, um, it's the new norm. And I know in my heart that the people that are coming out to watch have been waiting for this for God knows how long. You know, yeah. so they'll be so up for it. Even though they're not close to the stage, I know in my heart they'll be so up for it because I'll see, I'll, I'll be able to see them. You know, yeah. the lights and stuff like that. And uh, and we just want to have a good time. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, I really, really look forward to it. And what for the rest of the year? Have you got anything in plan? Yes, like I was saying earlier, um, I've got one more track left to record. So now yeah. that we're able to, you know, travel and, and do stuff, I've, I'm going to go back into the studio and finish that one last track. And then uh, right now, all the tracks on the album have been remixed and coming back uh, with new mixes that we're going to choose for the album and put the album together. And I guess before the end of the year, in about a month, maybe, let me not give a time on it, we, we're going to release... Uh, another single yeah and the plan is to release um the album in the new year also you know because i wasn't able to do a video for magnificent i hope i will be able to do a video for uh spinning away uh, if that's the track that we're going to do if not i'll get back to you <laughs> <laughs> but that's the other thing i wasn't able to do was a video for magnificent mm -hmm. so Asha stanley kindly put um a lyrical video together and he did a brilliant job so you know We've all been affected in some way, one way or the other. Have a chat with them. Magnificent, Joyner, Great Wall. Say that again. Magnificent, the Great Wall of China. Magnificent, the Great Wall of China, right. <laughs> right. Okay, Emma. Have a chat with them. They'll be fine. <laughs> that would be, can you imagine? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That would, oh, my word. Oh, I'm dreaming now. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And oh, so, I mean, it's every, every time I speak to you, it's an absolute pleasure. Oh, thank um, you. Obviously, we're embracing new technology, and it's as difficult for us as it is for yourself as an artist. I know that your your gigs are amazing because they always are. Thank you so much, Emma. So are you. So are you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we will definitely get some more some page and, and people will be able to watch this interview. I will pay, make sure it's up on the website for people to watch if they've missed any parts. Um, and hopefully we can catch up again soon. Oh, definitely. You, my girl. So don't you forget that. And you keep looking <laughs> so beautiful as you are. I, follow I you even brushed my hair for you today. No, you look, you look lovely. And I follow you on Instagram and I know you keep fit. So, so do I, you know, keep the guns going. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much, my lovely. Yeah, thank you. It's been an absolute joy. Thank you we so much. True Radio.